Good morning guys, got NFP today, um, May the 6th, 2022 bulletin. So obviously we need to be very careful from what we saw this week. We saw a big uh, roller coaster on risk. So big spike, I think we rallied 3% on the S&P and then yesterday we, we fell over 3%. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm gonna explain to you what I think is going on. Um, and I think I know what the cause is. Uh, it's, it's a complete, um, it's a speculation, but I think it's um, there's like a spillover from the crypto space, and uh, you know, like the retail apes, and they come in and they hold. I think there's uh, tens of millions of new retail traders have come in, and this is why this is what's skewing the sentiment. And um, this is why we're seeing these erratic moves in order to flush out those apes. But I'll talk about that when we get to the S&P sentiment. But that's what I think is going on. I think we're seeing a flush out of this dumb money. And uh, we're going to probably kind of spike a lot again in order to get them out of the market. Because the spark money, the, you know, the big fish don't want the dumb money involved, especially in longs. They can short it. That's fine, but they don't want they don't want the dumb money to go long, because obviously there's to be someone on the other side of the trade to take that trade, and um, they don't really want to be short, and they want to they ideally want to be buying because of their portfolios and uh, things like that. So um, I'll try not to rant when we get to the S and P sentiment, but oh, um, that that's what I think. That's my feelings. That's what's going on. So we have to be careful. So we should see some massive volatility to get them out. So we're currently at the precipice. We've been risk on, risk off. Uh, VIX spiked, but then you know we've got QT. We've got the Russia Ukraine. You've got the Shanghai lockdown. I think Beijing lockdown. Uh, North Korea uh, firing off missiles and all sorts of things. There's probably going to be something in the Middle East as well, um, and Iran. They'll probably invent something. And uh, so that's lots of reasons for the fix to be spiking. So we need to be super careful uh, today and next week. Uh, pound's trying to recover some of its losses, but we have to remember the dollar is mega strong on the big time frames, and it's acting like a safe haven, which would make sense because, you know, you know all these geopolitical things that are going on, the dollar should probably appreciate because it's safe haven status. Um, we're st Still was uh, when I was writing this. It wasn't six a.m. It was quite early. I woke up early, but uh, we might see some Aussie weakness. We might see some Kiwi strength, you know, possibly. And uh, this is subject to change because it updates every fifteen minutes. And this is what I had a little rant about just at the start of the video. But this this candle here, this one, normally conventionally in a traditional market, this would have flushed out the retail guys. That would have been enough move. To get them out and go oh my god you know the world's going to end get out get out sell but it didn't work you can see the sentiment was actually sideways there on that candle they sold it ever so slightly but then they held on and now they're going long so this candle here would have it has the design and intention of um flushing the dumb money that would have been an aggressive and scary enough break off that low in order to change the sentiment but this hasn't changed so this makes me think that retail apes are getting involved with their large pockets and their terrible risk management in fact i think they're not even having stops and if they don't have stops the only way that this is going they're going to get out of the casino is if this falls and it's going to crush them and it's going to blow their accounts so this is the issue currently okay um, so we probably need to breach 4,000 and um, then the world will end. And unfortunately, these new uh, dumb money, this new blood, they're going to have to get uh, squished and eradicated. And then, they, and then, you know, they leave the casino. And they might come back to the casino and then sell. But, uh, you know, it all depends. If someone on Reddit says, oh, no, buy, 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 and then everyone does it, then, you know, it's going to skew things. So unfortunately, unfortunately now they've got a community. Before uh, Reddit, they didn't have a community and they couldn't really share ideas. And now they follow each other like apes, like I keep saying. And uh, 
you know, this is what's happening, I think, and that's what's causing the volatility, uh, especially with the sentiment. So um, there's gold, so less crazy, uh, still, you know, fairly erratic, but not doing like 3% moves like the S&P. And we could potentially be having a buy, and there was the sell. Um, so you obviously you'd maybe you've got to wait for 1880 to break with a long, you know, tight stop. So we're going to fight to safety because these yields are pumping, and uh, you know this is uh, that's moved a lot in one week. There was three percent on Monday, and it's now three point one three. Uh, so that's a risk off sign. Okay, so we don't have an inversion, but these are pumping a lot, so uh, that tells us risk off. And quite a change in the 30-year yield. Now UJ is negatively correlated with 90% minus 90% probability. AJ is correlating positively at 95% probability. So look for AJ to see what uh, S&P is going to do. That'll give you a big heads up. And uh, that's a very, very good, powerful correlation. So I pull up a chart of AJ. If it's looking like it's going to puke, there's a 95% chance the S&P is going to puke. Okay? And rally as well, likewise, obviously. Um, there's a little glimpse of risk appetite. So fairly bearish there. Um, okay, SLC update. Uh, EJ was the largest mover, but you see that we've got mismatch. Uh, AU is sell, UC is buy. That's the only one that's matching. Oh, and gold for sell. So there's mismatch there. Uh, pound USD is also a sell. Mismatch, 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 and then mismatch. So there's a, not that much, many things that have an, an agreement at the dynamic, which is your time and the static. The static examines whether or not we're below 50% or above 50%, and the dynamic is the shifting that's in agreement to whether or not we're above or below 50%. So uh, quite a bit of, bit of mismatch. Um, Largest uh, SLC is AU, which you can see it's sticking out like a sore thumb. The location above is 72.70, the size is 4.86. So there's a large amount of stops here. And whether or not it's going to be safe, if we're going to be risk off, then it possibly, you know, it's going to be safe. Risk on, and then we're going to probably probe it. Now the signals were poor, and um, basically they don't behave well when risk appetite is undergoing heavy pressure. Um, the S&P, we, we had a, just a roller coaster this week. So I think what happens when we're having this um, this scenario brewing where things are just uh, like an elevator, up and down, up and down, the fundamental forces kick in and it overrides retail sentiment. When we consider retail sentiment is just an icing on the cake, there's lots of things in the cake that's gonna, um, you know, that, that are key ingredients. This is basically the icing but uh, fundamental forces are the actual, you know, the texture and body of the movement. This is, uh, you know, these forces are, are more powerful than just retail sentiment. This is just, uh, you know, a tiny proportion of the shift in because, you know, the big boys, they want the stops. But when things are going, um, you know, like the world's going to end scenario, it not, it's not going to. But when that sort of fear kicks in, fun fundamental forces come into play. And there's a flight to safety in bonds and dollar, and it's greater than retail sentiment shifting. So um, maybe what we're going to have to do next week, if it does this elevator thing where we drop and then um, rally, drop, rally, we're going to have to put in some fundamental checks in, and um, that's what we're going to have to do. So we'd have to put more checks, and I suppose if you think about it, less is probably better. Because, um, you know, if we're having this chop, our signals don't perform well because the fundamental forces kick in. And um, obviously, you know, there'd be a flight to safety, you know, in the dollar. And uh, that's it in a nutshell. We can't rely on sentiment alone when the NASDAQ has fallen 4% in a single day. Apple had its worst day in years. Amazon had a terrible day as well. Um, QT uh, also playing a large part of the skew. And we've got the retail apes as well. They're not helping. <laughs> and we've got an FP. 
and we should be seeing the flush out on risk, so be careful with the signals. I think if we continue next week with this elevated sense of risk off, we temporarily suspend the signals until things calm down. This might be the wisest option. Um, so what we'll probably do, we'll put in a fundamental check in next week. If they still go uh, in the off skew and they're still like getting massive amounts of volatility, we'll just suspend them. And I'll just post some um, trade setups, trade recommendations in the in the Telegram. And that's what we might just have to do instead uh, because these fundamental forces are going to basically kick in and it's going to override retail sentiment. So there's my little rant about the retail guys. It, I think it must be, it must be those guys are skewing it. Um, so we, they should have flushed out. In a normal market, that would have done the job, but they held on. In fact, they didn't just hold on, but they're going long. It's like they don't really care. They've got like those abandoned uh, uh, risk management, and so uh, I guess it's going to have to come down to get rid of those guys, or they'll get paid. I know that's a scenario as well. So trade carefully, but NFP, and we'll be back uh, on Monday. I don't know if I've got any videos to do over the weekend. I, if I think of anything, I'll, I'll do something. But I think uh, you guys have got enough to chew over, and we'll have to wait and see how we do with the signals as well. So um, m we might disable dollar CAD. Maybe that's what I was thinking because dollar CAD was. A big loss, 89 pips. So if we maybe uh, take that out, that might be a wise option. So have a good day, just be careful, and uh, we'll see you on Monday.